So uh, we have gold here today, and I'm purposefully, uh, we're using her for a demo today on a tension. And so as you can see right now, her attention is not on me at all. And uh, this is what I see gets a whole bunch of people in trouble with their horse, is their horses don't know how to pay attention. So as humans label it like, my horse doesn't trust me, or my horse doesn't respect my space, right? Watch Goldie here, she walks around, you know, in and out of my space, and she, she's just all over the place, right? So this is the problem. We wanna talk about the solution. So the problem is, we would say, as humans would say, gold doesn't respect my space or respect my boundaries, or gold doesn't trust me. And so, those are human words. Look them up in the dictionary. Those, those are human words, and horses don't work that way off of trust and respect the way us humans do. What's important to the horse is boundaries, and then attention. Because right now, her attention is all over the place because it's getting fueled by cortisol because she's worried because her BFF is over there, right? And just being all weird. So now Gold doesn't know what to do without her BFF. So she's just kind of all over the place. So we're going to take her in the round pen and we're going to get some boundaries in place and then we're going to get some attention so that we can relax Gold's mind. Because right now, look where her mind is. Everywhere but me. So the reticular activating system, remember that that's in charge of sight, sound, and touch. And so when you're trying to teach your horse something, you want to be number one in the reticular activating system. Right now I'm number 10 or 27. Like that Tweety bird over there is more important to gold than I am. So we're going to go get some boundaries and get some attention so we can, we can have a horse that can hold still. Right? Gold's just moving because the cortisol, the stress and worry are telling her feet to move and that's where she's going to feel better. So let's go show her how we're going to do this safely for both of us. So let's head to the round pen. We're just going to see if she can hold still here for a second. Yeah, that lasted about 12 seconds. See, so she just doesn't know, right? She's up here in front of me, she's in my space, and us humans would all label this that, that it's the horse, right? The horse needs training. No, she doesn't need training, she just, we need to relax her mind, so we're gonna get, get that done. Come on, Gold. Okay, well the first thing that I want to get Goldie going on here is I want to put a little bit of a boundary. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna teach Goldie how to not walk forward because her walking forward is what's getting her in trouble. That's what's getting her into my space. That's what's feeding more and more of this worry. So I'm gonna give a kiss and a wiggle and we're gonna get a little bit of a backup a little more. So what I'm going to do is ask Goldie to not walk forward. That's all I'm going to start with right now, seeing if I can get her feet to hold still. So I'm just going to correct her each time she walks forward. I'm just going to let her know that, hey, I've got a boundary. So i got to start building a little bit of a boundary right here. Once I get a little bit of a boundary, I'll start working on some attention. But the first thing I got to do is get her mind slowed down enough that she can hold her feet still. And so we'll get that and it's feeling like we're almost in place here. We're going to wait and just see how long she can stand here. And uh, I like to do it. If they can stand here for three minutes, then I feel pretty good that we're, you know, it's in place and then I can expect that or I can ask the horse to uh, keep this boundary in place. So there she walked forward. I'm just going to fix that every single time. So what we're doing, we're going to change some of the chemicals that's going on in her mind. So 
It's not that gold doesn't know how to stand still, because I looked out here this morning in the corral and she was standing still, right? She knows how to stand still. That's not the problem. The problem is there's too much cortisol, too much stress and worry going on in her brain, and there's also a, a it, it's spiked with a shot of oxytocin, right? The, the, the relationship drug or that bonding drug because her BFF is right over there. So she's just going through a little bit of uh, some chemical withdrawals and she's away from her, from her BFF. So we're gonna get this brain, get the right chemistry going on. So imagine trying to teach her while she can't even hold her feet still. So we gotta get, we gotta get that. And so we're waiting for her to lick and chew. This licking and chewing comes right after their mind settles a little bit and they kind of, they, they transition into that parasympathetic nervous system and she'll get a, a dopamine release. And that dopamine release is gonna feel really good and we want her to feel really good a lot. So we're still waiting for her to lick and chew. But just establishing this boundary right here, we've, we've got a little bit of a start here. We've got her at least not walking forward so far. But we're waiting for the chemicals to change in her brain. If she hasn't licked and chewed, then that chemistry change hasn't happened. There's still cortisol in there that's got her worried. So we're waiting for the dopamine. We're gonna wait for this licking and chewing because that kind of completes the cycle in the brain. Stress, worry, come back down and relax a little bit. And that's what we want to just take her. So head down is very much more relaxed. She's walking forward though, so we're just gonna fix that again. And we're gonna wait until she licks and chews. <laughs> because that's the beginning of that chemistry change in the brain. I don't want to try to teach her nothing when she's stressed and worried. That's a great way to waste time and calories. We'll get to the attention part in a minute. We're just seeing if she can hold her feet still. See, she thought about walking forward right there. She lowered her head and almost took a step. I'm waiting for this dopamine release because we want that to come in and just get her mind feeling softer and feeling better about not moving. If you're trying this at home, I know it'll be uh, super tempting to do more and more stuff once you get a little something working, right? It feels like, oh good, we got that, let's go. Yeah, all you're doing is messing up that dopamine release. You, you want your horse to lick and chew in between every little setting, whatever it is that you're doing. So I think we got her holding still. She still hasn't licked and chewed. So we're gonna start asking for a little bit of attention to see if Oh, she's going to lick and chew here in just a second. So as you watch her head, right, you can tell when she's paying attention to me and you can tell when she's not paying attention. We're going to build this attention, but right now we're just waiting for the mind to settle a little bit. So there's our first time licking and chewing. So that's telling me that was just, she just got a dopamine release. So that means she transitioned from fight, flight, mode, stress, worry, the sympathetic down to the parasympathetic. 
So now her mind's a little more relaxed. So I'm going to start asking now for attention. So anytime she looks away from me, I'm going to just ask for her attention to come back to me. Now, I'm not going to get after her as a reprimand. I'm just going to do things that I want to encourage her to pay attention to me rather than paying attention to, you know, the cat or the car or the horse over there. So I'm going to ask her to just stay focused, looking right at me, and I'm going to keep her from walking forward. And we're just going to set this up in place and start building some attention, turning her brain down, turning that crazy, all that stress and worry, just turn it down. So every time she looks away, she's going to do a little something to get her to come back to me, and I'm going to keep her feet as still as I can. And when I'm done, I'm just setting the lead rope on the ground because I'm going to build a nice ground tie with this later. But So right now I want this when the lead rope's on the ground, it means I'm done talking. So we're going to wait and let her decide. She gets distracted, do something to get her attention, and keep her from walking forward. So we're just going to do this a lot until she can pay attention and not walk forward. Every time her eyes leave me, I just want to get them back. Oh yeah, here comes some more licking and chewing in just a minute. Every time she looks away, I'm just going to do something on an arc here across the front of her to get her attention back to me and then release. And I want her to stand still and pay 100% attention to me. If I'm not number one in that reticular activating system, we're not getting anything done. So every time she looks away, she's just saying, you're not number one. See, now there's something behind her, got her all worried, so we're just going to keep asking for that attention and to back up. Attention. See, what happens when their brain leaves you and goes and gets worried about some, you know, looks at something else, that's what creates the caution. So I've got to keep her mind with me in order for her to relax. Because if she's allowed to sit and look at every single thing around, that just creates more and more cortisol, more and more caution. We want focus is how we're gonna get her to relax and get that brain chemistry changed. <laughs> 